when when you got that last bite from the black mamba, how did it feel? Hi guys, welcome to Luke's Bug Adventures. I am here at M. Dawson. We are at M. Toxins and look what's behind us. All of the venomous. And we're gonna see what today? We're going to see cobras, we're going to see black mambas. I think I found a cobra. How do you know that's a cobra? There's his head. I feel like his neck is a little flattened out, so okay. I think that's a cobra. Wow. And they're getting really close to each other. Oh my gosh, look at that. And they just don't care. <gasps> oh, oh. Guy, guy, what is friend, happening? Friend. What is happening? Oh my gosh. This is a symbiotic relationship. So, why is it a symbiotic relationship, as you said? Well, the, tur the tortoise will burrow a hole, and then the eastern diamondback will use that hole for nesting. So it's a symbiotic relationship. What does the tor uh, tortoise get out of it? Oh, uh, the tortoise gets great protection. Absolutely. Because who wants to mess with an eastern diamondback? It's a green rattlesnake. What did you just see? We found some venom. It's <laughs> even on the glass. Is that from a spinning cobra? Yep. I don't remember which one that was from. Um, earlier today we did a Mozambique spinning cobra and a Nubian spinning cobra. Ooh. How'd you figure out it was, from, it was from a spitting cobra? Well, because it falls back. <laughs> Dose of spitting cobra venom can kill 300 people. There is Ralph, his personal follow up, okay. who we do actually have here as well. Um, so the pictures up on this wall here are of Jack Facente, who is their preparing this after. Extracting is a, definitely a, a mentorship kind of thing. Okay. Um, you have to find some. What's his name? Winston. Winston. So you guys would like to find out too. No, she's just showing us her beautiful profile. You can be grumpy, you are beautiful. So so his name is Indo. Um, What's his name? Indo. Wow. Wow. Hi. Hi, Gordy. Hi. 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 Egg sacks. Yes, yes, line, yeah. And hatch them ourselves and release them in our gardens. Yeah. And I would always keep a couple oh. and raise them up. So I had turtles, 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 and my cousin had snakes. Yeah. So I started to learn snakes from her. That's incredible. So you started with insects and praying mantises. Yes. Look. That's me. That's you. <laughs> so when when you got that last bite from the black mamba, how did it feel? Because I know you sat for thirty minutes to see if it. Really, you know. Yeah, I did the wrong thing. <laughs> I helped treat snake bite, and I, I did the wrong thing because <laughs> I thought I knew more. You don't really feel anything with the black mamba bite. Really? You, you, it's like a, like a needle pricked your finger. Okay. And that's it. Yeah. And you don't know if anything happened. Okay. And then, uh, as time goes on, I started to lose the ability to control my eyes and my tongue, and it was really? starting to shut down my diaphragm. Whoa, so you had trouble breathing at that yeah. point? So, oh my gosh. I was gosh. Having, like, slurring my speech like I was drunk. Um, so we got the anti-venom from the fridge, raced over to the hospital, and I was home having dinner that night. Wow. But I, it feels like if you hadn't done it, like right when you did it, you'd be in big trouble. If I would if I would have just taken the anti-venom before I started to feel sick. Yeah. But I had just extracted from the snake, and... I had my finger on its nose, and this is how human errors happen when you work with dangerous animals. Right. My brain just told my left hand to move the snake, Okay. and it 
I ripped my finger open with its fang. The snake didn't bite me. Oh. It, I oh. it got somehow boom, got caught. Right into yeah. my own finger. Oh, wow. Oh, the snakes. It's, it's sort of ironic, or not, I don't know what the right word is, but it's like if it's going to happen, that's probably the last snake you want it to happen. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. the black it's mamba. Weird. But in a way, you were in the perfect place because you have the anti-venom and right. you can just take it right over well, to the that, hospital. That snake provided venom to make that batch of anti-venom. So. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> we jokingly it's, said it's farm to table, right? Like, it that's, is. <laughs> that's funny. What do you think? Is that albino? Because of that circular pattern there on their back. Is that albino? Yes, I believe so. Wow. So the process here is that we pin it just behind the head. Just enough force to get a good grip on it, not enough to hurt the animal. We try to make this as pain-free and stress-free as possible for all of these animals. Just because they do such amazing work here, they save their lives with their venom. Anything like that. Um, just okay. a way that we can hold it stable. This is a smaller one. Yep. So now, is, uh, in this case, is having a glove better or worse? Um, it kind of depends on the species. Um, so Typically, you know, it can affect the mobility and, you know, dexterity. So this is not a nice lizard. There you go. How's he feel? He feels great. This one here is a ring balls. <laughs> Look at the stinger. Did you see the stinger? Yeah. A thousand venom extractions. I've been bitten three times. So the most recent one was a black mamba, um, then a fertile ants, and a really rare snake called a stiletto snake. And they're from Africa. Um, and there's no antivenom for them. So they had to do really, really horrible pain management for that bite. This is black widow antivenom. So we're about 3,500 black widows here. From where? from an undisclosed location. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> If you come across one of these in the wild, why? This is a spitting cobra. A e Samar spitting cobra. Whoa. When they inject their uh, venom, they don't actually bite you. They can bite you, but huh? what they usually do instead is they have incredible aim and they shoot venom right into your eyes. Eek. And then, so, and then you start shutting down. They would be right. They can aim from my eyes from a distance of yeah. like how many feet? Ow! Whoa! Is that accurate? Uh, very accurate. Insanely accurate. Your eyes would burn like crazy, and your entire body would just shut down, and then you would fall to the ground. You would definitely need to go to the hospital ASAP. Yes. Soon as possible. Look at how beautiful its colors are. Yeah, beautiful but deadly. I don't know what you said.
said, but ask that question again. Is this CO2 chamber or another chemical? Yes, it is CO2. Um, so oh get it. getting the laughing gas is uh, the dentist. Uh, curly hair? Is that a curly hair? I'm not sure that one might be our time lap. And then for tarantulas, can you only extract from the females? That is a good question. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I Quickly, yeah. Look at that. And then back to the right top. Ready to go. Back to the top. Oh, a little bit of tiny, tiny little bit of venom. You're letting us come into the venomous part. Should we go there? Whoa. He's not interested. Let's try the heel monster. What? <laughs> Whoa. Go right up by his face. They're lazy lizards. There you go. Well, this should be effortless. He got it? He got it. <gasps> Good job. I moved. Two for two. <laughs> wow. Wow, you guys. Injecting venom, I'm guessing. Mm hmm And he's starting to turn it so that the head will go down first. When they're eating it, they get water at the same time. All gone. All gone. Spaghetti. <laughs> Even the spaghetti part is gone. I can. I'm getting a great shot of him swallowing it, though. You can make people jealous because we don't let anybody do this. Who are we going to be bashful today? We're not. We're not hungry. There we go. Whoa. She'll sit here and eat it in front of you. Oh my god. Whoa, it'll it's take a her a little power. bit because she they grab and hold so they, their venom starts to take effect. Right. And then uh, in a few minutes she'll start to actually use her fangs to lock the food down into her stomach. Now how long does it take for like in nature for the animal to die? so she can safely start eating it. It would be very, uh, very quick with oh. one of these. How venomous are these guys? Would, like, They're very venomous. Very dangerous. Because very. the rat, like, would it, would it be killed mostly by the venom uh, or mostly just by the panic? Well, it's actually, a lot of it's the trauma of those fangs going in. Yeah. You know, um, but the venom acts very, very quickly. Now, in the wild, what do these guys eat, Nathaniel? They'll eat uh, African rodents. Uh, they'll eat birds. They love birds. Uh, these would eat African stalkers? Yes. How did you know that? Because most African snakes eat African stalkers. Oh. <laughs> That's why. But, uh... They're, they're designed, they evolved rather, to look like a leaf. So this is supposed to look like a, a vein of a leaf. That's yeah. true. Just like a uh, leaf mantis, the leaf mantis. Our, our leaf mantises have the same veining on their wings, yeah. don't they? They do. Um, have you ever, have you ever <laughs> um, talked to the person that, or the people that you say lives of? Yes. So they know that the antivenom came from M toxins. When I was in Africa, we helped treat several snake bite patients. Whoa! Oh my gosh! How so does that make you feel? It. Just to like it's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you getting bit three times in ten thousand, twenty thousand is yeah. still worth it. Amazing. It makes it worth it. Amazing. Look, look what he said. And what are you gonna do? What do I do? With <laughs> Good question. You start practicing your snake hooking. So even with your pet snake, okay. okay, 
you can start to learn how to move snakes around. And if you ever, if you practice and practice and practice, eventually, and when you're older, you'll be able to be confident to use a hook to move a venomous snake. <gasps> Oh, well, you want to be a veterinarian. You might come across animals that need your help, and you never know if they're venomous or not. What do we say for the venom? <gasps> Look at those fangs. Oh, my God. Now, every time she sticks her fangs in, she's not necessarily injecting more venom. Okay. Snakes control how much venom they get. So now she's just working it down her throat. Now she's just working it down her throat. It's a separate set of muscles around the venom gland that and then she's got that round thing like below her throat that keeps closing and opening. That's what's called an epiglottis. That's Epi her oh, airway. yeah. That's, that's what they, airway. yeah. That's, that's the like airway. our epiglottis, but we don't breathe with that. All, all snakes have one of those, and while they're eating, that's what they use to breathe. One fang at a time. Yeah. She's doing one fang and oh, then another. Uh, oh, the fangs. The fangs are beyond belief. How, how long are the fangs, Nathaniel? On a adult kaboom viper, they have the longest fangs of any venomous snake. They're two inches long. Whoa. So they have two inch hypodermic needles. Holy macro. Two inches. Holy wow. macro. Spaghetti. Spaghetti time. Does the amount of venom that they have does that change as they get to be older? Well, the venom glands grow with them. Oh. So, the amount that they have when they're young is very little. Bit. Right. Pretty exciting to feed a gaboon viper, Jane? Yes. But you might be living the life. I might Someday be. you might be going and helping people, just like Mr. Nathaniel does. Right? Yes. With snake bites? You could. <laughs>